<laughs> yeah. So, so you've got, you've got a whole, like you've got an entire crew. You guys yep. have a, a lot going on. You mentioned yourself. It's like, you know, you're, you're a father, you're a professional athlete, you run a business, you know, you obviously you exist as an individual and you have a relationship with your wife. You know, how are you like you, know, how are you at balancing all those things now compared to when, you know, you had one kid and then the second showed up and, you know, have you improved that skill set over time or is it just, Oh yeah, I, I think definitely. I think how I balance that and then also how I respond to it mentally and emotionally and physically like that stuff all still plays a role in it as well. So if, if like me and my wife are very kind of laid back, like with our kids and like what they do and not getting too worked up and, if they're sick, like, okay, I'm going to leave the gym and I'm not going to train. Like my time is to then go help them. Um, that's just part of being a father and excuse me, a parent is those are your responsibilities is to take care of your little one. And you can't get worked up. If you like miss a training session, like early on, I used to like, Oh, I need to train. I need to train. But then it's like, okay, my kid is more important. Put that to the side. I'll train later, or I'll train tomorrow, or I'll make it up, whatever, or I'll just move on. But being stressed about it and worried and taking away from like your kids at home because I'm too concerned about hitting that training session, it's just not as important. And I think that's partially due to having kids, right? So it gives you a different perspective and a different kind of motivation and a why on like why you do things relative to if you just all you do is train and that's it like that's all you have right like there's more things than fitness (laughs) there's a lot it's hard it's hard to believe but that's yeah so i think outside of that it's almost been like a good thing for me is like i go home and like my time at home is focused on them like the only time i'm like having to train is if something with our schedules didn't line up and I needed to pick the kids up early and then I'll just go home and I still have everything at home. And then when I get a break, I'll go train. Um, So I think that's one thing for people to kind of work on is just not getting overwhelmed. If you're like missing training sessions or if you missed a workout, it's okay. Like just pick back up the next day and kind of get back into a routine. Um, Don't blame your kids for it. Like, Oh man, it's not their their fault, you know? Um, Like I've had for the last two weeks, we've had three kids sick, right? So I had like our daughter was sick and then my second child was sick and he was throwing up and then different stuff. So then he couldn't go to school. Then I had to keep him home. And then my other one has been sick three days in a row. So then it's just, that's just what it is sometimes, right? And I'm not going to sit here and complain and make excuses because I mean, we chose to have children and that was our choice. And now I need to help and provide and do the things I can to help out. And my job is definitely more flexible than my wife's. Um, And so she's a teacher. So then like her schedule is kind of set where mine's a little more free. So I will, the last couple of days I've kept him home. And then as soon as she gets home, I come into the gym and then I'll train, take a quick break, train again, and then do another session at home or just rest. And it's, I'm still getting those sessions in. It's just learning how to condense everything and not get worked up about it. And yeah, just, it, it's hard to find that balance, but I think also having kids provided that balance. Yeah. Right? So you have to do those things. Like you have to pick them up from school. You have to be there at the school bus stop. Like, so then it helps structure my entire training. Right. So that it's like, I know I have this block, then this is open. Then I have this block, this is open. Then I have this block. And so then you just start piecing everything together and figure out the schedule that works best for you. And I feel like we've done a good job kind of since day one of how to structure all of that. Like one kid is, I'm not going to say easy, but it's a lot easier to juggle. A lot easier than four. Yeah. (laughs) Like, all right, I can't get there. You can go pick them up where then when you have two, it's like, all right, now we're on man to man three. It's like, okay, now we're going to zone. And then four, it's like, ah, whatever. We'll just see what happens with the fourth one. Let's just hope we can pick them up and do everything that we can. Um, but yeah, it, it gets easier as it goes along, I think, because you probably get more laid back and are okay with everything. And then the amount of time probably with the first one on how like one-on-one it is, like then that time's becoming with like the siblings, like our oldest is helping out with the other ones. And then they kind of do their own thing where our third one, he's just wild. I mean, he just, 
he's the kid that grabs the marker and colors on the wall. Like none of my other kids did that, but this dude just decides, <laughs> Hey, I got a whole box of crowns. I'm going to draw all over the place. Puts, eats everything, but Oh man, I love him. He's wild. He's something else. <laughs> it, it sounds like it sounds, there's a, there's a lot of really good stuff that you said there. And I, I, I'm, I want to, I want to parse some of it out. Cause it sounds yeah. like yeah. one of the things that you mentioned was that your, it's like your life was almost forced to be much more compartmentalized and prioritized once you started having multiple kids, like even having one kid, it's important, but you know, like, uh, you know, once you have like two, three, four kids, the time that you have for certain activities, whether it's with, a, with one of your kids or with your, what, yeah, everything kind of like shrinks. And so you yeah. have to be super efficient. And if you miss that block, you also have to be really flexible about dealing with just being like, okay, that wasn't going to happen today. Not yep. a big deal. We'll pick it back up tomorrow. And have you found that that has like, have you always been the chill guy who's like laid back and easy, easy going with it? Or did you have to develop that along with, you know, this, this uh, prioritization and scheduling? Uh, I would say a little bit of both. I mean, I also, I'm very structured with how I'd like to do things like just kind of like with my training and how everything has kind of evolved over the years. Like I like when I hit my training sessions, I have certain training blocks on when I do them. And so at first I would say it definitely was a little kind of like chaotic of like, it was more like stress I would put on myself when I couldn't finish the session or if like I needed to go pick them up from school or something happened. Um, so I had to learn to just kind of like let that be what it is, what it is, and just like accept it and the amount of time I can then go back into the gym or make another trip up here, whatever it is, or just I need to do the workout at home, just do that. Um, or I just am okay with missing it. I'm like, you got to look at like big picture. It's like, okay, so I did three sessions today versus five. All right. Like it, it's all relative to a degree of just not getting too worked up about it for me I think it's just go with the flow like we never did schedules with our kids it was like when they want to nap they want to nap when they're going to eat they're going to eat like that's just how we kind of are uh where I know like my sister is very whoa <laughs> but she's like super structured um with how like my kid needs to eat now then they need to go take a nap and like that's how they work. But my wife and I are just a little more like, ah, well, they're going to sleep in the car and well, hopefully they'll get a good enough nap. And that's probably why they don't sleep very well. And they're up all the time, <laughs> but it definitely, <laughs> hopefully will work at some point in time that they'll become better sleepers. But I I've heard, uh, so I, I've, I've done one other episode of this, by the way, I did it with, I, uh, I spoke with Vellner yesterday. Uh, Pat uh, Vellner. Uh, love that guy. He also has a newborn. So we were nice. kind of comparing notes and he was talking about how he um, sort of witnessed, uh, you know, the the idea of having a super regimented like first child and then having a second child, and all of that schedule gets thrown out the window yep. because there's no way you can coordinate a, like a toddler to to deal with like a newborn schedule of like, okay, we're gonna be quiet for oh, yeah. two hours, like. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, I think there's a, there's like a resiliency that gets built around just being able to deal with some sort of chaos, like wrangling chaos with a bunch of children. Just imagine and, for it, the chaos, you just like, ah, whatever. Like, it's just yeah. like, and then, you know, it's funny, like it, there's always yelling, screaming, something always happening. So then your kid becomes a good sleeper because they're tired. And, but I remember our first one, like we would tiptoe down the hall. <laughs> he doesn't wake up. And then now it's like pots and pans are dropping. They're hitting, screaming, hitting each other. And she's like. Oh.